Is your signal a little weak into the local repeater? Using your rubber duck? Stay tuned and I'll show you how to build a simple 2 meter antenna to improve your signal. Hi, Randy K7AGE. I'm going to talk about how to improve your 2 meter FM signal. Just want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed to my videos, please press that subscribe button. I would appreciate a thumbs up. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Google+. The antenna that comes with your HD works fine, but it's, it's a compromise because it's not real long and the wires are wrapped around inside. You can improve that by going with an aftermarket antenna, which is longer. But if you're operating around home, you may want to think about an outside antenna. And let's talk about building a quarter wave ground plane to improve that. So what is a quarter wave ground plane antenna? It's one of the simplest antennas you can build. It's very easy. It's made up of a vertical element, which is a quarter wavelength of the operating frequency, and four radios, which are also a quarter wave of the operating frequency. A quarter wave antenna for two meters is not very large, because a quarter wave is about 19 inches. So we're talking about a vertical element that's 19 inches and four radios that are also 19 inches apiece. So a quarter wave vertical is very easy, very simple. It's a quarter wave vertical element and and four quarter wave radios. I'm only showing two on the drawing here. Now the length of the of the radio is equal to 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So I'm going to use 147 megahertz for my two meter antenna. So we get the calculator and the length will be 234 divided by 147 that equals to 1.59 feet and if I multiply that times 12 I get 19.1 inches. So each of these three will be 19.1 inches long. This connects to the radio. We have our coax that comes in. The center conductor of the coax connects to the vertical piece and the shield connects to all of the radios, all four of them. Okay, so to build our two meter ground plane antenna, we're going to build it around an SO239 chassis connector. You can buy these at Radio Shack, and what this is, is a connector um, made for a piece of equipment, and the way we're going to use this is that, of course, the coax will connect onto this side of the connector, and on the back side, our vertical will be soldered into the center, and there's four screw holes, and each one of these will have a screw holding the radio. And to build the antenna, I'm going to use some number 12 copper wire. This is nice because it's flexible and bendable. Another type of material a lot of people use is like welding rods. And these are uh, some 330 seconds. They're 36 inches long, so you'll need five because everything is over half the length of the, of the element. So I'm going to use the, the copper because it's flexible and you can fold up the antenna and you know, stick it in the back of your car. And the other thing you'll need is some hardware. So I'll, I have some uh, 632 screws, looks like about 3 eighths of an inch long, and these will fit through the holes here on the chassis connector, and that's what, how we're used to um, to connect our wires for our, for our four radios for the antenna. First thing to do is to cut our wire here, and I'm gonna cut them all just long, and I'll trim them to the exact length later. So. I'm going to cut them all to 20 inches. So I have five pieces to cut. I have my big cutters here. There's one, two, three, four. I have enough left over here for number five. Okay. I've got all our pieces cut. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my vise out of here. And I'm going to solder the center conductor in here. And 
for this I'm going to use my big soldering gun. You can use an iron. Smaller irons will be a little harder because you have a lot of mass here. So I'm going to heat this up first and tin this. Tin this solder, put some, get some solder on it. Okay, and now I'm going to solder this in here. And there's enough solder there. Cool. Don't want to move that. I get a cold solder joint here. Okay, that's the last soldering, so I can set that aside and use my vise. The other thing I'm going to do now is take the four of these, and I'm going to take the big pair of needle nose pliers. I'm going to crank that around and get an eyelet so I can get my screw in there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the uh, screw through the top and in the radio in the bottom here. <clears throat> and crash bang. And a trick my dad taught me was you. Put this on here so that when you tighten it, it will close. So I've got the wire wrapped this way around the screw. I'm going to put a lock washer on here and a nut. Maybe a half inch screw would have been better. This is a little unwieldy here, all these pieces start getting long. There we go. I got that one going. I'm just going to leave them a little loose for right now. So I'm just going to repeat that four more times. So here's the wire. I do when I'm buying hardware. I always buy more. Seems like there's something I'm always else I'm always going to need. And there we go. We kind of got the whole quarter wave ground plane. What I'm going to do now is I have a nut driver, a screwdriver, and I'm just going to tighten these all down. So that each one is 90 degrees out, 90 degrees from each other. There's one. So I want to check these lengths. They're all about 19 and a quarter. That's fine. And the vertical, I'm going to go from the top of the connector. Up here is. It's about 19 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to leave that for right now. Okay, so I moved outside here to give this a little test. I have some coax here. And one of the neat little tricks I read somewhere, if you get a 3 quarter inch piece of PVC, the PL259 will fit right through it. So I have a 10 foot long piece here. And I'm going to push this all the way through. I can just take the antenna and connect the coax to the bottom of it. And put that on good and tight, and that just drops back down into the top of the piece of PVC. Now I'm gonna attach it to my, my little light stand over here, and we'll give it a try. 
just clamp this onto the pole here. And let's check the SWR. Okay, I now have the antenna hooked up to my MFJ 269 antenna analyzer. And if I turn the tune knob here and look for a dip, that's at about 146.6 at 1.2 SWR. And if I move this down to say 144, check the lower limit, it's 1.5 SWR. And I can go up to 148, it's 1.4. So what this tells me is the antenna is very broad. I did turn the bend the top over about a half of an inch. So this means you can use the dimensions from the formula and the antenna will be usable on your radio. Okay, this K7AGE again. This is N6 DRY. If that's you, Randy, uh, all I'm getting is uh, static. Yeah, okay, N6D, DRY, I believe, K7AGE, just using the HT with the rubber ducky here. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the quarter wave ground plane and give that a try. No, that was unintelligible. I, okay. I couldn't make that out. He's not able to understand me, so I'm going to take this off and plug in the quarter wave ground plane. That's about four feet over my head. This K7AGE on the quarter wave ground plane now. Yeah, this is N60RY. That was um, full quieting, good audio. <laughs> okay, so that shows that the, um, th that the little stock rubber ducky just barely makes it into the repeater and the quarter wave ground plane is um, a much more full uh, uh, full quieting signal, so that's outstanding. Thank you. Okay, it's a pleasure. Well, the main repeater is on Pikes Hill uh, up at Shingle Springs. Uh, I think uh, it's about uh, uh, 2,200 feet, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have a voter out of Mount Vaca, and there's a third one somewhere else. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know where that is. Yeah, okay, so these repeaters are, they're probably in the 30 to 50 mile range away from where I am up here, just, just south of Grass Valley. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, anyway, uh, clear uh, signal in the, on a handheld, I think that's pretty good, so. Okay, well, I'm running a little simple ICOM uh, V80, it's a two meter only HT, kind of a very basic one. And uh, I've done three videos about for the new guys of getting on two meter FM. So this is another one in the series showing how to build a quarter wave ground plane antenna. And I have it stuck here next to me in a 10 foot piece of PVC uh, tubing. So it's uh, about three or four feet above my head. So it's just amazing how much you know difference it makes in getting the, uh, the signal to the repeater. Okay, Paul, well, I'll let you go there, and thanks for coming back to me and uh, experimenting with a little test this afternoon. So the theory does hold out. You know, just a little simple external antenna works a lot better than a rubber duck. Yeah, that's a Roger. Well, have a great day, Randy, and I'll be clear. This is N6DRY. N6DRY, K7AGE73, uh, and have a good day. It works. Well, that was a success. You could hear how the quarter wave two meter ground plane outperformed the stock rubber ducky antenna. Now I was getting into a repeater that's, well, my guess is 30 to 50 miles away. So that's a long ways away, but you can, sh you can see what the difference between the, the rubber ducky and a quarter wave ground plane. Now for your local repeaters, the rubber duckies are perfectly fine. But if you're at home and you're trying to work some more distance stuff, an outside antenna 
up in the air will make a tremendous difference. So you can play real quickly uh, for just a few dollars and build yourself a quarter wave two meter ground plane and put it out. If you're going to um, make it permanent, I would uh, maybe use some stronger elements like the uh, uh, welding rods. I would also seal the vertical where it comes, where it's soldered into the top of the connector. But for you know a couple dollar experiment to see if it's worth putting up, give it a try. K7AGE Randy 73. You can do this pretty easily on a slide reel too. I'm going to set um, 147, so that's 1, 4, and 7 on the D scale. And on the C scale, I'm going to slide this over, go 2, 2.1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. And now if I move this over to the end of the, um, the 1 on the D scale, look up on the C scale, it's 1.1. Five, nine feet, or if I multiply that now times 12 for inches, that'd be 1, 2 for 12, and it's 19.1 inches. So you can do all this with a slide rule tool. K7AGE.